This video continues the story told in part 1, where we left the railway at this point. The sun train is heading up the line, while the passenger is heading down the line. The two trains meet at Bukeley, where the up sun train has been waiting patiently for the late afternoon down passenger to clear the line. Having received the token and the all clear, the up sun train can depart. Followed shortly by the down passenger. At the furthermost terminus, Bickerton, Barclay Loco No. 2 Beeston has run round its train and departs, while overhead the Sun train passes slowly through Beeston Castle on its way to Beeston Market. The Sun Train is descending a slight gradient on its way towards Beeston Market, while the passenger is storming up the 1 in 40 Gallantry Bank on its way to Bukeley. At Beeston Market, a down empty ore train is about to depart. The Sun Train arrives. Hmm. I wonder how they managed to pass the token across from one to the other. Anyway, with the way ahead clear, the down ore train can move off. At Peckforton, the up passenger pulls in while a down ore train passes through. Lord Tolmash permits the quarrying of copper on his estate, on condition that both ore and spoil are removed, to keep the area from becoming unsightly. With a gristmill in the background, we see both trains passing beside the River Gowie. There was a gristmill at Bukeley, which was powered by water initially, and later by steam. With shadows lengthening, the early evening up passenger pulls into Beeston Market Station. The now emptied sun train has been patiently awaiting the all clear and the token, and is ready to proceed. A little while later, the returning up ore train emerges from the copper mine branch at Bukeley and hoots to alert the station master to be given the all clear. However, loco number six is running light back up to Beeston Market after delivering its empty hopper wagons to the sand quarry. After some discussion, it's decided that both locos can join forces and double-head the ore train. As it descends Gallantry Bank, the down evening mixed is on its approach to Beeston Castle. At Peckforton, the double-headed ore train awaits the arrival of the down mixed.
and once the section ahead is clear, the up or train can depart. Later still, we see the up mixed departing Bickerton station and passing the sand quarry, while above, at Beeston Castle, the last down ore train of the day passes through. They meet at Bukeley, after the mixed has been involved in some shunting operations. Passengers never complain about the leisurely pace of the mixed train. Why hurry? At the copper mine, the mixed is on its final approach to Beeston Market Station. Of course the copper mine isn't really here, it's at the far end of the line, but it's more convenient to have it located here so I can swap empty and full trains of skips. The last ore train is about to depart. It includes the workman's coach, a gunpowder van, and towards the end of the train, two empty pit prop wagons, which are being returned to Peckforton Sawmill. By the time the up ore train is approaching Peckforton Station, the down evening passenger is also heading towards Peckforton beside the River Gowie. A slightly different viewpoint, as the two trains have now changed places, after passing each other at Peckforton. It is now much later in the day at Beeston Market Station. The ore train has long since discharged its load at the exchange sidings and the workmen are either sitting at home having a well-deserved supper or are down at the pub drowning their sorrows. The up evening passenger has arrived and the last train of the day departs. A double-ended Ford rail motor bashed from a couple of Andel coaches and fitted with a modified MP3 player. Mm -hmm.